Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Thursday, November 28th. For the last few months, Elon Musk has said that Tesla was preparing to launch its full self-driving version 12 update in December, but it now looks like that update has been delayed. The Tesla version 12 software update is expected to introduce what Musk has been calling the end-to-end neural nets. Now, the biggest difference with the previous update is that the vehicle's controls would now be handled by neural nets rather than being coded by programmers. Now, the important update was supposed to be pushed to the fleet earlier this month, but Elon Musk said on X last night that it needs extra testing. At this point, we're not sure when the new version will roll out. Elon hasn't set a clear time frame for it, but we'll keep an ear out. A Tesla Cybertruck was spotted charging a Rivian R1T electric pickup, seemingly stuck without a functioning fast charger available. Kitty Adams Hawksbergen, the executive director at Adopt a Charge Incorporated, shared the picture, which reportedly came from the owner of the Rivian itself. She hypothesized that the owner was planning to charge at a CCS station, but it didn't work when they got there and they had to improvise. Now, the problem of inoperable DC fast chargers is quite real and one of the main reasons why automakers in North America are adopting the NACS connector to get access to Tesla's supercharger network. As a sort of public service announcement, if your Tesla vehicle starts smoking while supercharging, it might actually be just steam. Most Tesla vehicles are now equipped with heat pumps, which help with efficiency in cold weather, and they can also produce steam, which is alarming at first glance. In cold weather, ice can form on the condenser in the preconditioning of the battery pack, and then it melts and produces steam that looks like smoke coming out of the hood. With many new Tesla owners experiencing their first winter, there have been a few instances of them calling emergency services when they thought that their cars were on fire. Where there's smoke, there's fire, but when there's steam, it means that someone is charging at a faster rate than what I got on my Thanksgiving trip. It wasn't a great experience. As Aptera Motors looks to reach their long-sought scaled solar EV production milestone, they have secured a Tier 1 battery supplier and a hefty investment from Korean manufacturer CTNS. Per a LinkedIn post from CTNS, the Chief Strategy Officer, Jun Mo Kim, the battery technology company and Aptera Motors have signed a master supply agreement on December 22nd. CTNS will install battery production lines for Aptera and supply the battery packs for their solar EVs. Now, per Kim, the total size of the contract equates more than $15 million. In a move that mirrors Toyota, Ford is scaling back their transition to electric vehicles to instead put a bigger bet on hybrids. Ford sold more F-150 Lightnings last month than they did in the entire third quarter, but despite this, the company's CFO, John Lawler, said that Ford is, quote, slowing down several investments, including around $12 billion in EVs, as a matter of fact. Ford's financial leader said that the company will lean into hybrids as a bridge to electric vehicles. Lawler said that Ford, quote, became a little complacent on hybrids. He said hybrids were always a big part of the mix, which doesn't quite line up with what he just previously said, but he also said, quote, with EV adoption slower, hybrids are going to be a bigger part. Now, in Electrek's take, pushing back investments now while other automakers are surging ahead, this could put Ford further behind the industry on the shift to an all-electric future. Vietnamese EV maker VinFast has announced that they will open doors on their first dealership in the United States. This in the same state where they're building their $4 billion factory. The automaker is partnering with North Carolina's Leith Automotive Group to start selling fully electric cars in the state. VinFast Global Chief Executive told Reuters that the company is switching up their distribution model, which was previously based on direct-to-sales, so kind of like Tesla. Now they're going with what they're calling a hybrid model, which includes dealers. In its home country, VinFast has recently launched a $20,000 electric mini car called the VF3, and Electric has reported that the company is considering bringing it to the USA. We'll see how it goes when they take that to the dealers. Will it have a markup? Chinese smartphone giant Xiaomi has officially unveiled its first electric car at an event in Beijing. This while declaring their big ambitions to rival Tesla and Porsche and become a top automaker in the next two decades. 
The new car is the SU7, and they say it's going to compete with Porsche's Taycan Turbo. It looks like it, too. The new SU7 is an acronym for Speed Ultra, and it will come equipped with software and electronics from Xiaomi and a 101 kilowatt hour battery. Now, they say that it will provide a maximum range of 800 kilometers, or about 500 miles, and the vehicle will be available in a single or dual motor configuration. The top all-wheel drive will have 475 kilowatts of power and a 0 to 100 kilometer acceleration in 2.78 seconds. Xiaomi will undoubtedly be competing with BYD, who is also supplying batteries for some of their vehicles, this on their quest for EV market share. In today's community comment found on YouTube, I'm going to take a second to toot my own horn because yesterday's community comment indeed sparked some debate on Elon Musk and his value to the Tesla brand. I'm quite pleased because my opinion earned accusations that I was too light on Elon Musk and also too hard. I choose to believe that this is an indicator that I successfully threaded the needle regarding this polarizing figure. Indeed, Elon has inspired many great innovators, dreamers, and even some fanboys. People who can look beyond the personal and profane dealings of a worldly man to hone in on a great virtue. Now, these great virtues are a real prize, but not really the face that we put in front of it. And whether it's politicians, CEOs, athletes, religious, or intellectual figures, there is a natural and ingrained piece of our tribal heritage that compels us to suspend our judgment in exchange for identity or security. In many cases, like in school or work, this is perfectly natural and normal. But I think that when the subjects of allegiance are less immediate to our survival, there is a temptation to fall astray very quickly. When people argue about distant public figures whom they never meet, and I'll just call these people an arguer, it's easy to claim the aspirational part of their personal character matching the public figure, or at least what the public figure exemplifies. Put another way, the arguer who claims allegiance might do so because they wish to be hailed by their peers as having those same traits. Now, placing the likeness of the public figure in front of their own personality, the arguer can then create a shield for criticism that can indefinitely deflect perceived assaults. And with this armor, some arguers set out on expeditions to validate their choice. And the primary method of doing so in today's day and age is just picking fights with strangers on the internet. Now, when like-minded people find commonality in these defenses that they've chosen, the behaviors accelerate. Then new incentives, such as assimilating and signaling to a group identity, enter into the mix. And the next thing you know, there is a huge mob of delicate aggressors willing to say anything to secure their place or validate themselves. It's not long before their sense of loyalty to that great virtue has all but faded away, slowly parceled out in exchange for ego preservation or a self-crowned membership in an imaginary hierarchy. But then again, when you point a finger, there's three more pointing back at you. In my case, I don't have to look very far to find the holes in my own thinking because the community comment section keeps me on my toes. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great opinion.